What's up, guys and gals? It's your host with the most groover as always, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for Jujutsu Kaisen, chapter 228. Entitled, of course, The Defeated Battle in Shinjuku once again, blah, 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 blah. Part number six. Okay, so there are two things I want to take away from this chapter because so far the fight has been incredible, hasn't it? It's been really, really good. And uh, quite a bit of it has gone over my head. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Quite a bit of it has just... Boom. Right? Not a big deal. Not really a big deal for the enjoyment of this fight. Especially when, at the end of the day, we're back to fisticuffs by the end of the chapter. So we're back to the old fisticuffs. Let's go. Um, but there's a couple of things I want to bring up. Number one. Maharaga. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, is it at all possible that Maharaga has been released this entire time and has been through some crazy manipulations by Sukuna? He's either done the wheel thing that he did in the last fight, he merged with Maharaga, Maharaga's watching and waiting under his orders or within his domain or something, because we saw the wheel at the end and stuff, and literally that's the reason he's not using any other techniques is because... He's letting Maharaga absorb every fucking thing that Gojo is pulling out. Just so then he can go... Maharaga, bitch. And then Gojo can't defeat Maharaga because Maharaga adapted to every single one of Gojo's abilities and techniques. I mean, clearly, even if that is the plan, it's awesome. But even if that's the plan, obviously this is the battle. And Gojo's going to have something up his sleeve. Obviously. But still? Hmm. Like this entire chapter made everybody question it. Sh showing off the Maharaga wheel at the uh, second last panel of the chapter. And also Gojo questioning all the reasons. Why is Sukuna not doing A? Why is he doing B? Why isn't he doing C instead of D? Why is he doing this? You know... He's questioning it at every turn. Why isn't he using this? Why isn't he using that? The other thing. So, realistically, even Gojo's sort of like, yeah. Afterwards, when you think about it, this chapter, mid-fight, came out as a victory. We thought, anyways. Gojo actually not only won the domain battle, clearly, destroyed Malevolent Shrine and did significant damage to Sukuna. So it's like, hell yeah. And then we're talking about the RCT. That's the other thing I want to bring up is the RCT. So, we don't really get an answer for this, technically. Um, I guess the idea is Sakuna is just that guy. That's what we're going to go off of. Because they bring up the fact... Well, Kusakabe, being the basically the commenter, narrator, fucking director of this fight, and just giving us all the information that... We just don't know because Higuruma and Hakari didn't know how their domains work. They're, they're just based on the curse technique. They activate the curse technique. Their domain is sort of part of it. It's sort of a two for one. It's a Super Saiyan bargain sale sort of idea with them, right? So, okay, fine dandy, right? So they're the exceptions to the rule, which I find weird because he's like, here's the rule. We already have two people in this room who are the exceptions, so, and we're seeing, and somebody brought up at the beginning of the chapter is like, well, that's impossible. Well, the impossible keeps fucking happening in this fight, so I don't think anything's shy of possible at this point. Which basically summarizes a lot of the reader's uh, understanding, I guess, even mine, uh, at my lower comprehension of the power system in the series and stuff, uh, to the end of the day that... There's a lot of shit going down that's just unprecedented. There's a lot of unprecedented shit between Gojo and Sukuna going down right now. Once again, bringing up my second point, talking about the RCT shit. So, it's brought up once again that, okay, so... What Hakari does is not... Is not what uh, Gojo's been doing. That's clear. That's clear as day at this point. We already know this because of all the explanations we've gotten in multiple chapters. You can hold on to that theory, but suffice to say there's more evidence against that. So Gojo is doing something unprecedented. From the RCT master himself, Yuta, who is standing there going, 
because Maki brings it up and says, hey, uh, well, once the domain battle ends, says, well, he'll just do what he did before with our CT. He'll heal his curse technique and he'll be one up on Sukuna. Angel brings up a problem with that, saying that, like, but he showed it to Sukuna. Meaning that Sukuna, and they bring up the fact that something about Kenjaku with the fingers, I forget that piece of lore. Kenjaku was the one who sealed Sukuna or convinced Sukuna for some reason to become 20 fingers. I, I don't remember that part, but okay, sure, I'm gonna go with that. Um, I'm sure it did happen, guys. I'm sure it did. I just, I forgot how Sukuna. Uh, how Kenjaku was involved with Sukuna becoming 20 fingers. Whatever. Uh, fact of the matter is, is that he figured out how to become his own cursed object, like, by seeing that technique once. So their summary is that this man, that Sukuna, is basically Kisuke Urahara. He sees a technique, boom, he understands it, and you can't use it against him anymore because he already found out five ways to counter it. He is the ultimate counter master. You show him a technique, yeah, fucked. He's either going to do the same thing, or he knows a way to beat it. Right? They're claiming Sukuna is that level. Which, to be fair to a lot of the community, if Gojo's not that guy, Sukuna is that guy. Let's be real. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. The problem that I have with this is that Yuta claims that when Maki says this, uh, yeah, well, I can use RCT, and I can't fucking do that shit. Now, granted, I'm sitting there back like, Yuta, why don't you give it a go? You know? Why don't you go off right now, instead of watching the fight, why don't you go off and practice? Why don't you launch a domain, and then uh, see if you can heal your technique with RCT, just like Gojo did. It seems more of a not unique to Gojo, it's just how the hell you pull it off. It seems like one of those things you have to really try to learn. Sort of like, I don't know, becoming Super Saiyan 3 or something like that. Like, it's it's, it's different. There's, there's different steps to getting to that level. It's not just through hard work and training and stuff. You, you know what I mean? So, maybe practice, maybe innovation, whatever you want to call it. The fact of the matter is, is that Yuta saying, yeah, well, just because he has RC, RCT doesn't mean that he can do that same shit. I have it, and I can't fucking do it. And I'm going to take Yuta on his word right now that even if he attempted it, he wouldn't be able to do it. But practice? Total different kettle of fish. But right now, Yuta's claiming even if he tried, he couldn't do it. So, we're basing the fact off that Sukuna saw him do it, but... What did he really see? It's not like it's a Naruto hand sign jutsu stuff that he can copy or something like that, you know what I mean? He it's sort of invisible to the naked eye. You, you just he just did it. RCT doesn't have some crazy like or a ah, I took it like this and then I melded it into the shape of a triangle and when if you mold it into the shape of a triangle and then push it against your heart then you're all good. There's no seeing how he did it. So the fact of the matter is, is that Angel, even in quotation, said he showed it to Sukuna. What he showed was that it was possible. Sukuna doesn't know how it was done, though. And granted, once again, I'm going to say, yeah, Sukuna is that guy. But I think we're, we should put more eggs in the Maharaga basket. That he's got a bigger long game than Gojo has. I don't think he's going to copy this. I don't actually think he can. I don't think he can copy the ability. And the fact of the matter is, Yuta, of all people, granted he can only copy curse techniques, etc, etc, but if Yuta, the copy master, is sitting there watching Gojo do it and go, I can't do it, and he's got RCT, he doesn't need to copy any of the abilities, he literally needs to copy the way Gojo did it, and he's saying, no. I understand Sukuna's that guy, but at the same time, there was nothing to witness. There was nothing to see. He just did it, and it was probably some mental math working in his head. You know, the meme with all the crazy calculations going forth? That's how Gojo pulled it off. You know, so... 
I'm not 100% convinced that Sakuna can do what Gojo did right here on the fly. Can he learn it? 100%. No different than I think that Yuta and Hakari could probably learn how to do this shit. Definitely Yuta, if nobody else. But that doesn't mean that I think that Sakuna learned it by seeing it once in the stakes of the biggest high diff battle in the entire series. I'm not completely convinced of that. I think their assessment is off. Granted, their assessment, their commentating has been off time and time again almost every chapter. This is the rule. Well, it was broken. This is the rule. Well, it was broken. He can't do that. Well, he did it. So every single time these commentators, these guys watching the fight say something can't be done, it ends up being done. They keep on doing what they're saying. So, yeah. I'm going to sit back and say that no, Sukuna actually can't do that. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. Uh, but I think he's got a better long game plan. I think that Maharaga shit is where we have got to put our eggs in that basket. Is the Maharaga is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Maharaga is going to be here. And Maharaga is going to kick some Gojo ass. And it's going to be epic. And I'm still rooting for Gojo on this one, but I don't know what to tell you guys. I think I think this is a great fight. I think this chapter just brings up more of the same great shit. And I'm looking forward to chapter 229. So I hope you guys are too. So that's pretty much my review. Unfortunately, I didn't get spoiled exactly, but I sort of found out what went down in the chapter more or less. Like I really... I, I heard the Maharaga term thrown around, so at that point I was going to do a live reaction, ended up not doing it, decided to do the, just read the chapter and do this review instead. But uh, anyways, not disappointed, you know, because a lot of it, once again, the power scaling, or, or the power explanations and why this is working, why this isn't working, and by chapter 232, everything we learned in the last five chapters is going to be out the window anyways. Regardless of what explanations we understand today, they're going to be screwed up by next week. So, <laughs> it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned, so I don't mind uh, skipping this as a particular live reaction, but uh, what did you guys think? Let me know. Are you excited for chapter 229? Of course you are. I am too. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like comment and subscribe and we'll see you all you beautiful people back here next time looking forward to it know you guys are too sayonara